Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so today, uh, well, right now I, we are moving to a different topic, that of energy security in the region. Uh, and this is what I will be presenting today is the dra draft of a paper that uh, came out of a larger research project that we are conducting at the Institute uh, for the past year, looking at socioeconomic uh, impacts of renewable energy developments in Middle East and North Africa, with a particular focus on Egypt and Morocco. So um, the paper is focused on assessing the emerging innovation systems for renewable energy uh, in Egypt and Morocco. And I will start by briefly introducing the context uh, for why low carbon development is important for the region. Then I will talk a little bit about the conceptual framework we used uh, for uh, the analysis. Uh, I will give you a brief introduction uh, into renewable energy development uh, in the two countries. And then we'll go into uh, some uh, analysis uh, of um, uh, elements related to the innovation systems, and I will close with some comparative perspectives on the two countries. So first of all, uh, uh, as we all know, most of this, uh, mo most of the countries in the region rely heavily on uh, fossil fuels for their energy generation. And as a result, of course, most of the greenhouse gas emissions uh, are due to uh, energy production transformation and use uh, of uh, uh, this type of fuels. Although as a whole, uh, as you can see from the graph, the share of greenhouse gas emissions in min uh, from mi the MENA region to the world uh, 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 CO2 emissions are not so, are not so high. Uh, they range, they are at about 5%. Also, the region is uh, facing uh, water scarcity, and if we uh, look uh, at the uh, predictions, uh, by 2050 there will be a high uh, water deficit uh, in the region, which suggests that um, alter alternative uh, solutions uh, need for providing water need to be uh, found. Water desalination is one such solution, but the problem is that it's uh, highly energy intensive. At the same time, because of uh, population growth and economic growth, uh, energy demand uh, in, in the region is growing at about uh, 6 to 8 percent per year, which for Morocco and Egypt uh, means that uh, energy demand is expected to double by 2020 or and triple by uh, 2030. So new solutions for uh, providing uh, energy are, are needed. Uh, but uh, because of the geographical position of the region, the availability of renewable energy resources uh, are very high. Uh, the region benefiting from high levels of solar insulation, one of the highest worldwide, as well as a strong wind resource. So as you can see from the table, uh, the uh, availability of renewable energy uh, resources is much higher than in countries northern of the Mediterranean, which have already developed a strong renewable energy uh, sector and capabilities. Also, uh, for those of you who are familiar with projects such as uh, Desert Tech or the Mediterranean Solar Plan, the, there are also opportunities for the region to benefit from EU, uh, EU, Middle East and North Africa energy market integration, which would enable exports of renewable energy from uh, southern Mediterranean countries to the north. And already large investments have been made uh, in the region and uh, some pilot projects are uh, in the pipeline. However, uh, as various studies show, the region is faced with uh, uh, low industrial competitiveness and also a low uh, innovation potential. Um, and from a social uh, aspect, uh, very high levels of unemployment among uh, uh, the educated youth, 
which uh, for us uh, suggests that in order to enable renewable energy uh, development in the region, industrial integration is critical, as well as the development of an innovation-led uh, economy that would enable these countries not only to develop technology, but also to adapt existing technologies to uh, local environmental conditions. Okay, so the research questions that uh, I was concerned with uh, for this paper are first, how does the renewable energy uh, agenda play into the emerging of uh, 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 the emergence and functioning of an innovation system? And second of all, uh, what factors affect policy choices and how are different interests managed uh, in the decision making process? So first of all, uh, I will define what we mean by an innovation system and uh, uh, using uh, one of the available definitions. And uh, an innovation system is basically uh, uh, comprises the elements and here by elements we mean the different stakeholders involved in the development process and uh, very importantly the relationships uh, uh, between them uh, that are needed for the production, diffusions, and use of new, uh, new uh, knowledge that are either located within the national boundaries or outside. So a, a quick uh, representation of, uh, and a rough representation of this innovation system are the structure, what you see in the middle of the uh, circle, which are the actors, the stakeholders, the institutions, uh, the uh, policies, uh, networks, which are uh, the relationships between the different uh, actors, the knowledge and the technologies uh, available. And then on the outside are the different functions of the innovation systems that result from the interaction of uh, uh, these different structural elements of the innovation system. So for the paper, we use uh, a conceptual framework that draws on the core innovation system research, which places, uh, it's called the sustainability-oriented innovation system, which place much stronger emphasis on issues of uh, governance and uh, the sustainability transition process, which uh, brings in different elements than what we are uh, typically needed for an innovation process uh, for in, in other sectors uh, than uh, clean energy. And here are uh, the new dimensions that the SOS uh, system brings to the literature. I will emphasize and I will talk primarily about the governance aspects and I will not spend uh, a lot of time right now discussing the others. You can uh, find them in the paper. But on the governance level, the issues that uh, are relevant are the fact that uh, with clean technology we need to overcome uh, multiple uh, market failures in developing and deploying technologies and also that uh, a stronger consensus between different stakeholders is needed. Um, also the fact that the time pressure for finding solutions are, is much higher and the importance and the need of harmonizing policy frameworks all of, also within national context but also across region at, at the uh, cross-regional level. So first of all, uh, what has uh, some uh, key aspects related to the development of renewable energy uh, in each country. In Egypt, uh, in 2008, the Ministry of Electricity and Energy has set a 20% renewable energy target to be reached by 2020, which means that uh, 7.2 gigawatt of wind energy are expected to be installed by then and also uh, some uh, targets for solar energy. Um, also, the new and renewable energy authority, which is a older agency in Egypt uh, created in the 1980s, has been tasked with the implementation of uh, these renewable energy targets. In Morocco, uh, the renewable energy targets have been uh, set in 2009 uh, at a level of 42 uh, percent, uh, including hydro, which from the renewable, for the renewable energy means that 2 gigawatt of solar and 2 gigawatt of wind energy are to be installed by uh, 2020. 
and uh, the landmark project of this uh, renewable energy uh, target is the uh, project in Warzazat, uh, which entails the development of a 500 megawatt concentrated solar power uh, plant, which would uh, be the largest such plant uh, worldwide. Also in Morocco, high commitment for green electricity exports have been made under the framework of Desertec Industrial Initi Initiative and uh, Mediterranean Solar Plan. And uh, also a new agency, the Moroccan Agency for Solar Energy, has been created to uh, basically follow the implementation and carry out the implementation of the solar plan as well as, uh, which is uh, interesting and will be discussed later, as well as to make sure that a certain level of industrial integration in the local economy uh, takes place. Okay, so uh, what I will do now is look at the internal, at the structure of the innovation system and look at uh, what are the different, uh, to what extent different elements uh, are present and what aspects are uh, currently missing. And then I will discuss uh, some, or I will highlight some, comp uh, compare, I will compare the, uh, some uh, developments between the two, between the two countries. So, if we uh, look at Egypt, uh, the two organizations that are uh, uh, critical for the implementation of the renewable energy targets are the Ministry of uh, Environment and, uh, and RIA. Um, and the private sector is uh, uh, dominate, it's dominated by large firms uh, that are, uh, have the capacity to invest in the, in the sector. Also, there are um, uh, the industry association for the wind industry, but that are currently uh, weak uh, with respect to supporting the sector. Um, okay, for time uh, reasons, I will try to uh, just highlight some of the issues. Uh, with respect to knowledge and technologies, there are some initiatives that have been implemented in terms of integrating education into the curriculum, and, but uh, uh, are fairly limited at this stage. And uh, on the institutional level, uh, uh, th there is currently no feed-in tariff to support uh, deployment and several incentives are expected uh, with a new electricity law which unfortunately have been delayed for the past couple of years especially because of the um, uncertain political uh, instability in the country. In Morocco the um, stakeholder uh, landscape is a little bit more varied with the new, new institutions that have been created, uh, both in terms of the implementation as well as funding and uh, 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 the investment fund for renewable energy and industry associations that are a little bit more varied, uh, both for solar and wind energy and that have a higher stake in, in the current development. Also, so on the knowledge and technologies, there is a new institute for solar energy research that has been tasked with uh, creating a platform for cooperation between the private sector and academia, uh, which although no or new, uh, established in 2010, uh, seems to be uh, doing some uh, interesting uh, steps towards uh, that goal. Uh, but on the institutional level, uh, there is still uh, more to be uh, done in setting up uh, institutional framework that to enable um, renewable energy uh, deployment. So on the uh, some uh, comparative perspective, if we are to compare the developments between Egypt and Morocco, uh, we can see that uh, the government commitment towards renewable energy has been stronger in Morocco uh, as exemplified by several aspects. First, uh, there is more uh, clear responsibility and more authority built into the de decision making of uh, certain key organizations. Um, also, uh, new organizational structures have been created um, as opposed to uh, in Egypt where uh, currently 
uh, the new uh, renewable energy developments are, are emerging from organizations that have been there and are not uh, extremely familiar with, impl with the implementation of the renewable energy plans. And also, um, more focus has been placed on building institutional uh, capability into existing organizations. Um, Okay, with uh, industrial integration, uh, which is important both uh, for uh, the innovation system locally, is critical for both uh, country, for both of the countries, both in terms of jobs and private sector development. Uh, but uh, a clear uh, focus on industrial integration is currently present uh, only in. Uh, uh, Morocco, so this is something to be considered for uh, Egypt as well. Uh, also, the cooperation levels in both uh, countries are relatively low, um, so uh, more needs to be done uh, in, in, in this respect. And uh, something that is uh, the case for both uh, uh, countries is that there is currently a bias towards large-scale renewable energy projects, which uh, uh, increases the risk of uh, reducing the potential for technology transfer and uh, job creation. So, uh, uh, change in the legislation to support uh, small-scale, uh, uh, either grid-connected or off-grid renewable energy developments are critical for enabling the local private sector to participate more in man both manufacturing as well as uh, uh, job uh, as, as well as job creation so uh, while uh, there are uh, various gaps uh, into the emerging uh, in uh, innovation system uh, in both morocco uh, and egypt there is a, uh, from what we can see now, it is likely that Morocco uh, can position itself much better or at a, can start earlier uh, to uh, move towards an integrated innovation system with a considerable uh, focus on local uh, industrial development. And one of the reasons why this uh, would be the case is that the motivations uh, for uh, shifting towards a sustainable development uh, process are uh, different in the two countries relate and th those motivations would be defined by different factors first uh, uh, the fact that uh, morocco is much more dependent on imports of energy than egypt so the pressure for uh, look, shifting or looking for alternative energy solutions is much higher in morocco also, opportunities for export to Europe are uh, much uh, higher for Morocco due to its geographical location. So Morocco is likely to benefit uh, more from uh, investment from Europe uh, and would act, uh, these opportunities would act as an external uh, push factor. And uh, also uh, the commitment for renewable energy uh, development and industrial integration comes from much very high up into the administration in Morocco, but uh, in Egypt, uh, um, it is likely that with political more political stability, um, the, this the interest to renewables uh, into renewables will will increase as well. So yeah, I, I think I made already this point and. I will stop here. Mm -hmm.